This is me. And this, and that too. Yep, that one's me. And even that one. My name is Parker Offhouse, and I'm a senior at Southside High School, but you knew that already. What you didn't know is that I obsess over music, my walls are covered in memories from my life, and I make films. A lot of films. My senior year of high school has been insane. I'm a contracted editor, I have a job, and I was stage manager for the school musical and the play, which I also designed the set for. Countless campus visits, college applications, scholarship applications, and then the eagerness and apprehensiveness of the emails that I received back. Gaining friends, losing friends, putting myself out there, and working long hours every day to have the last year of high school you see in every coming-of-age movie. To Charlie. To Charlie. I was only diagnosed with depression recently, but I've been dealing with it since sixth grade. The apathy towards everything, not just the dull parts of life, but the best parts of them too. The call of my bed, the urge to fall asleep for days on end. The want for the world to stop, just for a moment, just so I can catch up. This was especially hard for me during my junior year when the realization that I had a future to prepare for finally hit me. Earning two diplomas requires a lot of discipline, time management, and juggling classes. No, not an actual juggling class. Juggling classes. The art of balancing a dual credit economics class, an IB English class, an AP calculus class, and a three hour filmmaking pathway at the Career Academy. See also the Gender Sexuality Alliance, Technical Theater, a part-time job making bagel sandwiches, friendships, healthy eating habits, hobbies, and sleep. The stress of all these expectations of success and the weight of my depression led to severe burnout. The constant worry over everything I have to do, the moments before starting a new task, wondering if any of it is worth it anymore. The guilt that follows me like a shadow after any sort of rest. All of these emotions, worries, fears, and insecurities were getting tangled up in my brain like hundreds of birds desperate to flee the same cramped cage. I found it hard to keep my eyes open in math class and the annotations for my English class now seemed unnecessary. I stopped reaching out to friends, stopped going to after school curriculars, and stopped eating regularly. All these stressors I had to juggle were falling to the wayside the worse my depression got. I hoped that if the normal problems were no longer there, the apathy and burnout would disappear too. Then why did I still feel crushed by this overbearing mental weight? Why was life still moving too fast and not giving me time to stop and think? I could not find a clear answer to any of my desperate questions and felt so alone in my struggle that I wanted to just give up. Then came the journal. William Wordsworth once said, fill your paper with the breathings of your heart. So that is what I did. I poured every thought I had into my journal, ignoring the notion that the words I wrote were not good enough or smart enough. I wrote for myself. I wrote what I needed to hear and what I needed to let go of. The pages of this notebook hold my deepest secrets, my plans for future films, doodles, favorite songs, technical jargon, screams into the void, and countless, I mean countless, to-do lists. This small notebook that I carry everywhere created order in my chaos. Writing down the negative thoughts and overwhelming stressors keeping me from enjoying my life helped me to realize that they were simply not that big a deal. While writing in a place that offered no digital distractions, I began to have real conversations with myself. I formed a connection with who I am at my core and learned how to best foster my happiness and creativity. Journaling pushed me to become more mindful of what I was doing and how it affected my mental health. So what now? The universe is constantly expanding. New stars are forming, black holes are growing, and I am here. I filled a number of notebooks since I started journaling during my junior year, and they've all taught me one thing. Talk to yourself. While I struggle with depression, it has become much more manageable due to the conversations I have with myself through my writing. Writing to-do lists every morning turns the overwhelming mountain of work I may never finish into a simple and methodical order to my day, which leads to less chance of burnout and overstimulation. Writing down my creative ideas without fear of outside critique or opinion allows me to explore each idea freely. As I reach the end of my senior year, my writing has centered around a future life in college. Diagrams of how my education will relate to my career goals, grounding techniques for when I become overstimulated, and scholarships application ideas cover the pages. As I move towards college, I make sure to keep my journal in my back pocket. Creating an area where I can be honest with myself has helped me foster a safe space for the negative thoughts I previously run from. Writing in a journal calms my mind, nurtures my creativity, and molds my depression into a manageable state. So if you're asking, what now? The answer is, write about it.